thanks very much for watching my content. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you for 200 plus subscribers. It means a great deal to me that so many people want to watch my stuff. If you're not yet subscribed, get on there and do it and give us a thumbs up on this video as well. And if there's anything that you want me to try and demonstrate, let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much. Yeah, and welcome to another video. This one is a user request video. It was requested by, and I do apologize if I pronounce this incorrectly, Mr. Hoelm, who requested a video on custom poses. So here we are in Dash Studio, and here's a little test pose that I made. It's like a little, I'm a little teapot style pose, just a random one to demonstrate what the uh, finished product is going to be obviously we aren't going to make this pose we're going to do something a little bit more interesting but this is just it how easily it works now before i get started there is a couple of things i need to talk about firstly is that you probably want to create custom poses on a character by character basis what i mean is is that any pose we create for this character here is going to be great for this character here but any character which may have different proportions such as wider hips um, fatter different body parts the poses are going to potentially collide with the mesh and not work they'll work to the extent that they'll put the character in the same pose but you'll find that they'll probably be clipping on the hands and potentially other body parts so as you can see what i've done here is i've got a folder called my poses in which i've separated it into female and male and then in male i've got genesis 8 because that's what character this guy is and then his character name is there and the poses that i create for him are going to be stored in this folder so without further ado we're going to restore figure pose like so and there's different ways that we can do this. For example, we can select bones individually, making sure we've got our move tool selected. We can select individual parts of the body, individual joints, and we can adjust their properties like so. And we can also click and drag body parts to where we want them to be. Of course, that's, that does cause ragdolling, as you can see here, which is funny to watch, but at the same time, not particularly useful. Uh, generally speaking, I avoid using the ragdoll um, posing method only because you have no real control over what happens to the rest of the way. Yes, you can pin joints rotationally by using this tool here. You can pin their translation and rotation. So if I wanted to pin its translation, I can now rotate around, but it's just not uh, controlled enough for me. So we're gonna unpin that. We're gonna click on the little icon here and we're gonna restore the figure pose back to default like so. Now what I'm thinking is maybe having this guy sitting on the floor, which means that we're going to have to do some translating as well as posing so we're going to drop this guy but the entire body as you can see from the tree here is centered around the hip bone which is here so if we want this guy to be sitting on the floor we want to get the hip in the position that we want to be in first and then work around everything else that's the safest way of doing it so we're going to drop the hip down to the floor like so and i'm actually going to create a plane just to make visualizing what we're doing a little easier 20 meters is fine this is just so that we know if we're going to be clipping the floor because when we apply this pose we're going to assume that the character's in the right position for that um, scene so when he sits down we want his buttocks to be on the surface of the floor not through it or above it like so now there's two options we can either do each leg individually or we can try and control both the legs at the same time so we can select our main character like so and then in this parameters tab at the very bottom we've got pose controls and then we've got the different body parts laid out. So we can select legs and you can see here 
that we have multiple options and one of them is knees up so if we bring our knees up as you can see what we've done is we've saved ourselves a bit of work there by moving both the legs simultaneously now obviously this is not uh, ideal it's great if you want him to be squatting like um you know he's in some kind of interpretation or dance class but this isn't going to do the job so we can open and close our legs we could maybe make him cross legs just for the fun of it so when your legs are crossed your knees are out like so now we can fix his y position a little better to make sure that he is at the right height and it's gonna go a bit quicker than I expected there so we want him to be we want his buttocks to be slightly flat against the floor so there looks good to me you don't want it to be sitting no one's there's not, I'm sure that um, many ladies would like to be that firm that when they sit down they don't flatten out onto the floor but um, human beings have soft flesh so that's the way it the way it has to be so we've done as much as we can do in this in this parameters tab for now so we're going to have to do it by joint by joint now so i have selected the right shin or the left shin sorry get my left and my right the right way around and we're going to look at what we can do so it's fully bent at the moment so when we have our legs crossed it's not always fully bent in fact i'm going to change its position here and I'm going to do before I do anything else I'm going to lock the hip where it is in both translation and rotation to make sure that when we pull these legs around the hips stay where they are undo that so that if we do need to do any dragging we can we know for sure that the hips aren't going to move so we can look at what options we have available to us I think this one's going to be the bottom leg so we're going to give it a little bit of and we're going to have to twist it so that the foot comes up out of the floor like so and let's see what we've got now have we got his feet are still a little bit into the floor so we're going to have to make some other adjustments people don't sit with their cross leg they're not doing the splits Let's say people tend to like their keep their noise on the floor. Now we may be limited here by the limp by the joint rotation limits, so we may have to turn those off. But we'll see what we can do with what we've got available to us right now. So I'm going to keep him around about there, and then we can go up to the left thigh twist, and you can make more adjustments to each of these joints like so. So we've actually gone fully twist in there. We're going to adjust that one like so. And we're just going to see what comes out of this like so. Now this is the long laborious part of setting up a pose is picking our joints. So I'm actually going to fast forward through this bit so that you haven't got to sit and watch me tweak every single joint and bone and any time that any salient point comes up obviously we will discuss it so enjoy
So there we have it. It's uh, it's a bit rough around the edges. It would need obviously quite a bit of time to fine tune and tweak the pose, but it's basic and it demonstrates what we need it to do. So yeah, it's a very basic cross-legged pose. It, I would never actually use this in a render because it, it's pretty bad, but <laughs> it serves the purpose for training in this video. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to select our character. In fact, we're going to delete the plane now because we don't need it. We're going to select our character and we're going to go to file and we're going to go to save as and we're going to save it as a pose preset. It should automatically go to the folder where I saved the test. So we can now call this one cross-legged Dave. Make sure that we have the name of the character. In fact, if we want a, pro a proper naming convention, we should put the name of the character first. And then old habits die hard. Too many capitals, there we go. So Dave cross laid, now we select save. And now it's going to ask us whether we want to save the as an animation or as the current frame only. So we'll say current frame only. And then as you can see, it's going to select all of the properties that we need. We're gonna compress the file because there's no reason to tweak it in a text file. Uh, editor so we're going to hit accept it's going to take a minute to think about that it's going to write the file it's got to write for file uh, details for all the joints so it's going to take a minute just to do this step so now that our file is saved we can go into our content library and we can open up the folder select dave and there it is cross leg dave <clears throat> We're gonna restore our figure pose and we're gonna make sure that it works. So there you go, folks, that is it. That's all you need to do to create your custom poses. As I said, it does take a lot of fine tuning and tweaking. Use the tools available to you, pin the joints if you need to, to make sure that the character isn't going to move around. Just remember to unpin them before you start reposing. So unselect all of these things and you can see that the icon turns purple on the pin when you select a join that has got a pin. It's white on this one. If we go to the hip bone itself, you can see it's got the purple indicated to tell us that we have pinned something. So we can turn all the pins off and now we can manipulate our character again as much as we want. Make them do a little dance and say uh, bye bye. Thanks very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.